Good morning, Jessica here from All the Sparkle. Over the weekend, I shared a card on my blog using LED lights to light Rudolph's nose. I had a lot of requests for tutorials showing how to use these lights, so I decided to give it a try. I'm starting off with a panel that I stamped using images from Concord 9's Missing You stamp set. I stamped the images in VersaFine ink and heat embossed them with clear embossing powder. The star I embossed in silver powder. Um, off camera, I punched a little hole through the middle of the star and I'm just showing you where that hole was. This is where the light is going to shine through. The next thing I'm doing is taking a piece of cardstock, cut slightly smaller than my card front, and lining it up on the back. This is where I'm going to create my circuit for my lights. I'm lining it up against the back of my panel so that I can mark where the light will shine. And I'm using a pencil just to dot a little hole through the middle of that star. The next thing I need to do is mark where my battery will go. My battery is going to connect to my light using uh, copper foil tape. The LED lights are little triangles. They have a positive and a negative side and each side will connect to one side of the battery. This is why we have a fold in the paper so that each side of the battery can touch or can connect to the sticker. So you see I'm marking the positive and the negative. I usually do that just to remind myself of where everything goes. And then I draw just a line to kind of show me where I'm going to lay my copper foil tape. The copper foil tape must connect to the battery and to each side of the light in order for the circuit to be complete. As you can see, I drew little arrows just to remind myself of where I'm bringing the tape. Um, the copper foil tape is easy to work with. It comes with an adhesive backing and you will just run the tape from the battery to the light. You want to use one continuous piece of tape as the adhesive backing on the tape is not a good conductor and won't give you a complete circuit. Generally, I start with only removing a small portion of the adhesive backing um, while I decide where I want to start. Here you can see I changed my mind um, and decided to start the other direction. So I work slowly, pulling off the adhesive backing as I press my tape down against the cardstock. Make sure you press nice and firmly to get a good seal on the cardstock. When I reach a corner, I fold the tape at a right angle to get a nice sharp crease, and then I fold it back along itself so that I can keep going with one continuous piece. When I get near to where the light will be, I go ahead and trim off that end and then continue on the next side. I went ahead and speeded up this process um, to make it a little bit faster. Okay, my tape is adhered. The next step is to add my light. Um, the LED lights have two sides. The top of the triangle has a negative sign and the bottom of the triangle has a positive sign. You want to make sure that you line those up with the correct side of the battery. And now it's time to see if the circuit works. Place the battery on the correct side and fold over your paper. And if the connection is good, your light will light up. Um, the reason I cut my panel a little bit smaller is normally the, the light won't be exactly where the pencil dot was since it's, you can't see through the light. Um, and this way I, I save myself some unnecessary trimming at the end of my project. The scientific portion of my card is done and now it's time to work on the background panel. I'm going to blend Distress Inks onto my panel to create a starry night sky. I'm using Salty Ocean, Blueprint Sketch, and Chip Sapphire Distress Inks. If you don't want to make a light up card, you can follow the same steps and add stickles or a gemstone to the center of your star to give it a little extra sparkle. I'm going to speed up my video as I work on my background.
Now that my blending is done, I'm going to go ahead and take my sharp tool and re-poke that hole through the center of my star. Then I decided I wanted to add some water droplets to really create the effect of a starry sky. So I started off by spritzing my paper and then blotting it off. I spritzed it a couple times and each time I blotted it off and finally I also went ahead and cleaned off any ink off of my embossed sections. Now that my panel is dry, it's time to assemble the card. The first thing I'm going to do is attach the negative side of my battery to my card panel using my ATG gun. I want to create a temporary circuit, meaning that you have to press on the card in order for the light to light up. Otherwise, it would drain the battery if the light was permanently on. I'm taking a double layer of foam tape and adding it around my circuit. The next step is to add a little bit of adhesive to the top part of the folded triangle. Um, this will attach to the back of my card panel and when pressed will create a circuit to light the little LED light. There is no adhesive between the positive side of the battery and the folded piece of paper. I'm adding a little bit of foam tape in the middle for support. Now I'm lighting my circuit by pressing on the card and using that to figure out exactly where to place my card front. I'll go ahead and light the circuit with one hand and then align the light right over that little hole in the middle of my star. Since there's a lot of adhesive around the star, I can go ahead and make sure that that's sealed before removing my hand and finishing sealing the circuit to the card front. So this is the important time, making sure the circuit still works. Um, I usually press a couple times just to make sure everything's working okay. And then I add a lot of adhesive to the back of the panel before adhering it to my card base. I'll line up my card panel and the card base, press them together, and that's it. My light up card is complete. Usually when I send a card like this, I will include a note telling them what to do or where to push so they know how to get the card to light up. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment here on YouTube or on my blog and I'll try to help you out. I will also include a list of all the supplies I used on my blog. Thanks so much for visiting and have a wonderful day.